I've never believed in ghosts. And I'm still not sure if I do. But I was there at the beginning and end of a story about one. Although I never witnessed anything. The young woman who related the story to me had such an intensity about her that it was clear that she believed something had happened to her. There was a young man with her also at the time, but he didn't hang around when they left. He couldn't get out of there fast enough. So I just have her version of events. I should just make some things clear. My name is Pat. I'm a council employee, and I have responsibilities for buildings, including abandoned ones. One winter, a few years ago, this young woman, Freya, and her friend Josh, approached the council to photograph a disused library. Well, they were given permission, and it fell to me to meet them there. Well, this uh, woman, Freya, she came across as very intense, and Josh was overly earnest, irritatingly so. When I said that I found abandoned buildings pretty weird, he said that they loved documenting them, and had been in a disused hospital recently. This just gave me the creeps. Especially when Freya said that the most poignant part was the children's ward, where there was still wallpaper and some toys. Anyway, I gave them the health and safety rundown, because the building didn't have any electricity and they were going to be there after dark. I said that I'd swim by after work to lock up about seven o'clock, and I gave them a spare key for the front door, so they didn't have people wandering in and they could come and go as they pleased. They had my mobile number, in case they finished early, I said goodbye, wished them luck. So from now on, this is the story that Freya told me. I wrote it down as soon as she'd gone, because it all seemed so unbelievable listening to it the next day in my office. Freya told Josh to set up the video camera in what had been the children's area. I forgot to say something. They happened to be there on Freya's 30th birthday. Now Josh was curious to know why she was so keen to be there on her birthday. And Freya replied, you know, you have absolutely no imagination at times. Think of all those places we've been to, all those people passing through, their hopes and fears, the children's ward. Have you ever felt anything in those places that we've been into? Anyway, Josh went off to the main library to take some shots. And Freya looked through the viewfinder of the video camera, panning it to a corner. Something puzzled her. She called Josh back. Just take a look through the viewfinder, into that corner. Can you see a fuzzy outline of something? Josh wasn't sure, but he took some shots on his own camera, and after looking at the screen, agreed that there was something fuzzy, but he thought it was the wallpaper pattern causing it. He went back to the main library, leaving Freya in the children's area. Even though it was still light outside, it seemed dark in the library. And then the camera began to emit a static noise. Freya looked through the viewfinder again. What the hell? Josh, get back here. Look, look again. What do you see? They both agreed they saw the outline of a chair, although to the naked eye there was nothing there. Josh began to get the jitters and wanted to leave. And then the video camera began to emit an even louder static noise. Freya looked again through the viewfinder. 
Have another look, she told Josh. He did so, and Niddy fell backwards. They had both seen a figure sitting on the chair. Now Josh was still trying to be rational, saying there must be some sort of interference. It became even darker in the library. So they both turned on their head torches. And then another burst of static from the camera. And then this, this weird noise started emanating from it, getting louder and louder. The head torches snapped out. But the sound continued, except now it was coming from the corner. And something was saying, Freya, Freya. Josh screamed and ran out, whilst Freya shouted, Mum! Mum! It's me! I met Freya again some time later, just before the library was about to be demolished. I asked her what Josh was doing. She said she'd tried to help him, but, but couldn't. I googled him. He's taking photographs of landscapes now. I said to Freya, I believe you experienced something. And there's a reason why I tried to get in contact with you. I got in touch with a retired librarian who used to work here. And she said that there was this woman, a down and out, they all thought she was very strange and she'd had a very tragic life. But the library was one of the few places, the only place, where she was treated with kindness and compassion. Although on occasion they had to ask her to leave. Because this woman wore so many layers in the winter, nobody knew that she'd become pregnant. Thirty years ago, she gave birth to a baby girl in the children's area of the library. The child was adopted. And the woman, having nowhere else to go, turned to the library and was found dead in the children's area one year later. A retired librarian told me that she sometimes used to feel something in that area, although it was always a benign presence. Your visit, Freya, coincided with the anniversary of the woman's death. Now, I hope you don't mind, but the retired librarian and I did some digging, as much as we could without your consent. I handed Freya an A4 envelope full of documents. 